It's your Locked On Flyers podcast for Tuesday, January 24th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high quality content that seems like it was just yesterday we were playing the Kings on this road trip, and uh, lo and behold, we're here again. It's deja vu all over again. Exactly. All right, we've got that plus Phantoms Tuesday all on today's show. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello there. I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here as always with Russ Cohen, who is on Twitter at Sportsology. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Lockdown Flyers. That is where we have the latest and greatest on our episodes and Flyers news. You can also email the show at LockdownFlyers at Gmail. We've got a mailbag on tomorrow's show, so get those questions in. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Locked On Flyers is free and available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. So subscribe. You'll get all of our episodes here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Plus, we're over on YouTube. So subscribe there as well. Russ, uh, like we said at the top, it's the LA Kings again, and uh, we saw them on December 31st. The Flyers won that game 4-2, to two. and since then, the Flyers have racked up 14 points in 11 games played. They're 7-4. and four. The Kings are 5-4 and four with 10 points in 9 games played, so kind of similar in terms of the points uh, per game there, but uh, the Kings have had a little bit of a lull here. They won against the Blackhawks on Sunday, but that ended a three-game losing streak for them where they had lost to the Preds, the Stars, and the Devils. So all pretty solid teams there for sure. Yeah, I think they're kind of back on the horse, so to speak, right now. To some degree, uh, you know, last I plugged into the Kings, Phoenix Copley was their starting goalie. And so it's interesting how sometimes things can work out. Whether he'll be, you know, the starter that night, who knows? Whether he'll be the starter that takes him into the playoffs, who knows? You know, Quick has had his ups and downs, though. So... Phoenix Copley is, has been the guy lately. Uh, they've, they've struggled a bit uh, defensively, even though they have good puck movers and guys who have offensive talent. Defense hasn't been their strong suit uh, really at all, and that's where I think some of this comes from. They're getting, you know, decent offense. I mean, you know, Alex Ayafalo will kill the, King, uh, the Flyers because he just does. Kopitar right. will have his usual good game. That's to be expected. But this is this is a winnable game in the sense <clears throat> that you don't want to put them on the power play and you just don't want to have bad turnovers. If you could stay away from those things, you know, I think that's a big deal. Now, if Arthur Kaliev comes back, that's a big shot. And and he's got a, a tremendous shot. So with a big body, yeah. which could give the problems to the Flyers. Yeah, he's been on IR, but uh, indications are that he could be returning soon. Not sure when that might be. Uh, Gabe Velarde was on the COVID list for them, uh, so he could be returning as well. And it's been a you know a, a very flexible lineup for them over the last little bit. Um, they are kind of knee deep in this divisional race in the Pacific, you know, they're currently yeah. in third, but um, you know, the teams above them have a couple of games in hand. 
And that, that division is just very competitive right now. And I'm not clear who's going to end up on top. You know, the Kraken have made, you know, really strong progress this season, but the, the other teams around them are, are playing pretty well, including the Kings. Yeah. Um, you know, Kevin Fiala, that's their, the offense runs through him. Uh, you know, you had pointed out in our notes that Quinton Byfield scored recently. That had been an issue. So we'll see uh, if he brings his A game. It's good to see Alex Turcotte in there because a lot of people have been maligning him, thinking that maybe he's a bust. But he has had a lot of injury issues over the last few years. So it'll be interesting. As a smart player, he certainly can't hurt that lineup. So, you know, they have a fair amount of youth in their lineup too. And it's going to be, a honestly, a battle of the goaltenders, whoever matches up in that, and then whoever plays the smarter game. Yeah, Alex Turcotte had concussion issues, so he just played his first game right. of the season, uh, getting back in the lineup. He only played, I think, like eight minutes or so, so he's you know slow and steady on coming back. Yeah. Um, he'll probably get more minutes than that in the game against the Flyers, but not much more, right. I would say, just to be safe. And the, the thing with Kevin Fiala is interesting because they dropped him to the third line versus Chicago the other night. Um, he did get two assists in that game. His minutes weren't that far down of, of what they had been, but they they had moved Quentin Byfield up to the top line to try and get him some chemistry with Kopitar, and that seemed to have worked out for them. But uh, Kevin Fiala is still a point per game for the season, despite you know being dropped to that third line and through no fault of his own. That was just a coach's decision to you know try and get Quentin Byfield going. But I think that, you know, they do have all that young talent there. And it, it will be interesting to see, you know, in this iteration of it, even though it's been only been a few weeks, um, you know, what the differences are and how the Kings might change their game up. Because they did find some success uh, recently playing sort of a low event defensive style. That kind of you know, it's like the two same ends of the magnet going up against each other with the Flyers. And and so the Flyers are going to have to be very consistent in their defensive play. It was a very scientific analogy there. I liked it. <laughs> Brought me back to fourth grade. Um, but no, listen, uh, I think there's something to be said about that. I do think they play similar styles. I do think there's going to be uh, a lot of discussion, I think, between the GMs because, you know, the Flyers could make a trade with the uh, Kings and Dean Lombardi certainly knows everybody there. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. I, I, I believe I'll be back that game. So that's good. And we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes, but let's see where, where the Flyers land on this one, because you know, that last game, they, you know, almost came back, but didn't, they had good moments, but the game didn't start off. Well, I think that's something other than the Detroit game. I'd say the last two out of three, They've not started well. Going, was that going back to the Bruins? So I'd like to see a better start. You don't want to just hand it to this Kings yeah. team. They're the ones on the road. You can make it, you know, a little bit harder for them. That that's what I'm looking at. Make it harder on the Kings. Yeah, and and to your point about penalties, you know, the Kings themselves have run into penalty trouble when they've tried to hold leads. And if that sounds familiar, it should. <laughs> and so. Again, there, there are these similarities there and, you know, other teams have gotten back into games against the Kings recently because of that penalty trouble. So if the Flyers can stay disciplined and, you know, despite the fact that they wound up losing the game, were successful against a very good Winnipeg Jets penalty kill. Um, I think that that could be the difference here. Yeah. The only thing is the Kings do play at a high tempo and we saw what happened to the Flyers in that game, and that's where you hope that mentally they're prepared for that. Like, all right, look, that game, because, you know, I would say for the first period and a half, that game was a track meet with Winnipeg until things started mm -hmm. to change. So they have to be ready for that again, and that's that's the, the biggest thing. Be ready for it. I mean, you know, I hate to say this to malign um, the coach, but there's probably not going to be any changes to help the team speed. Should there be? Maybe but we're probably not going to see any. Yeah. I just don't know what they could do right now to, 
to fix that other than, you know, maybe bringing some guys up that maybe quite aren't ready yet, but do have the speed. I mean, that's what you would have to do, but they're not going to do that. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, speaking of those guys, a lot of them are in Lehigh Valley, and we are going to talk about them coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. The NFL playoffs are in full swing. Once again, go birds. We are really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America, and that's FanDuel. If you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers can join today to get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. It's all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So football fans, don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets. Win or lose at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Russ, we had a very good week for the Phantoms uh, this past week. Uh, We did see, uh, as we know, Sam Erson was sent back down, but Felix Sandstrom was still playing for the first two games uh, against Cleveland. So we'll get to that part of it in a little bit. They did call Zade Wisdom back up from the Royals, which was good to see. He played Wednesday in Cleveland, which is the downside of it, that they only uh, were able to fit him in the lineup for one of the three games. And congratulations are owed to Cal O'Reilly, 700th career point in the awesome. AHL uh, on Friday versus Wilkes-Barre Scranton. The Phantoms won all three games. The back to back in Cleveland. Uh, they had a regulation win, three to one, an overtime win, two to one. And then Friday, uh, it was an absolute miracle, but uh, the Phantoms looked really good and beat Wilkes-Barre Scranton handily five to two. So I think it was a good weekend. It was. We, we've been looking for one of these and, you know, we finally got it. Uh, play was much better. January has been better for them. So this is now the upswing of the season. And, you know, they made a little headway point-wise in the standings. Like, you know, they were temporarily in third place, but that people were excited about that. So at least now there's a, you know, you can look and see that there's possibly some better play on the horizon. I still think it's going to be a struggle to make the playoffs, but, you know, they're showing a little uptick and that's, I like to see that. Yeah, you talked about the division. Uh, It's kind of a crazy division for the Phantoms. So Hershey and Providence are the top two in the division. And those two teams are like 10 plus points ahead of everybody else. And if you look at third to eighth place, which is last place in the division, the the point range for those teams is only 41 to 44 points. So yeah, that's it's crazy. really tight. It is really tight in the division. And so the Phantoms are really going to have to get every point possible in order to maintain the position that they're at and not just immediately bump all the way down. Um, you know, this upcoming week is going to be a bit of a challenge for that, which we'll get to a little bit later in the show. But yeah, I think, you know, this week was very good for them, good for their confidence, good for their play. The penalty kill was perfect all week, Uh, you know, six for six, four for four, three for three, which is a really good sign that the defensive discipline is there and, you know, they're getting different personnel out there on the penalty kill which has been really good. You know, the the power play still needs a little bit of work. They were two for 12 yeah. for the week um, on Wednesday. I would have liked them to, to get a little bit more success and then they wouldn't have had to go to overtime in that game. True. It, it 
Cleveland. But yeah, I think that, you know, there has been a, a really good January. They're 5 0 and 1 on the road so far in January. That's not their overall record, but they have been playing really good hockey on the road. No, they have. I mean, this is, like I said, this is a real good point of the season. Maybe it's that magic of practicing outdoors. Players love to get outdoors, and, uh, you know, maybe that's helped. I always believe there's magic in outdoor hockey. That's just me. But they do look more cohesive right this moment. So this is a good point to build on. I don't know if they can make up 10 points in the standings to get much higher, but they just need to get to the playoffs. That's yeah, really I think as long as they're in third or fourth in, in the division, that's going to be a successful season right. right now. Yeah, that's the goal. Yeah, and I, I think that, you know, they, like I've said, you know, the past couple of weeks, there is a little bit of a struggle here with too many guys. And so getting everybody playing time is, is a, a difficult thing. And, you know, the guys that are getting the playing time are the ones that are getting results. And so not only are they playing better overall, but I think a, a large part of it is, to, is because of the internal competition that mm -hmm. is happening there between guys to, to earn those minutes. and. You know, I don't think, you know, it's the same as with the Flyers in terms of if you get in Tortorella's doghouse, like you're in the doghouse. Right. Ian LaPerriere is is very different on that front. And he gives guys chances and he's he understands that it's a different role for himself as coach. Um, you know, we, we've criticized him and, you know, and absolutely you know, it's been fair to do so because mm -hmm. the results haven't necessarily been there. But one thing that has been there, I think is his ability to really recognize when he needs to give players time to give them a chance. Right. I think that's fair. And that's something where I think that's different from last year. And that's a, that's a, a positive for Ian LaPerrier. I think that's exactly where he has improved. And I, I do think that he deserves some of that credit. Um, you know, one of the other things that has been interesting about the last you know, little bit is, you know, some of the the players have really stepped up mm -hmm. a lot. And so I want to talk about Bobby Brink first, just because um you know, expectations are kind of a slow build for him and he is really working hard. And I feel like this week he got a little bit more physical than he had been uh, the previous weeks. Uh, he did get in a fight in the game against <laughs> Wilkesbury Scranton. Uh, there was a lot of fights in that game, but um, you know, it did not work out well for him, but it wasn't like he didn't get destroyed either. It just was, not a good fight for him. But yeah, I mean, he's not a big fighter. I mean, you no, know. he's not. But the, the point is, is that he, he really got involved on yes. that front and, you know, really integrating into the team, I think, a lot better uh, than he had been. Um, he wound up with a goal and an assist on Tuesday and a goal on Friday. And um, he's he's been, you know, away from the puck, I think, playing pretty well. He's finding open ice. And so I think he's making the right kind of progress so far. Yeah, I do too. I mean, that's, you don't want to get hurt, but beyond that, uh, all those other things have been good. Uh, he really has fit in with the team. Well, you know, he has done some scoring. Now he's getting well-rounded into the lineup. I, I like what I see. Yeah. I, I really love what he is doing so far and, you know, they're giving him the right kind of ice time as right. well. So you know, again, to Ian LaPerrier's credit, I think that, um, you know, Bobby Brink is, is on the right path. And, and that's what we'd like to see. Um, you know, one of the guys that, you know, we've not been talking too much about recently is Jackson Cates. And mm -hmm. his play really took a step forward. And he's really like uh, opening himself up to being a playmaker in a more significant way. And, you know, he got two assists on Tuesday, two assists on Friday. And I think that he is kind of a chameleon in that he can kind of find his place on any line that they put him on. And I think mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, 
I would be paying more attention to his play if, if I were the Flyers right now. Yeah, I, I would too. I think that's fair, but I, I just don't think they're paying a lot of attention to a lot of guys. I don't think they're going to until after the deadline. That's just my feeling. So we'll see how certain players are doing after the deadline. I think that's when they're going to really have to do something about things. Yeah, well, that's why I'm talking about him because I feel like somebody yes. should be. <laughs> no, no, and that's play. and that's good. And I appreciate that, and, and everybody who's listening appreciates that. Well, we have a lot more guys to talk about, and we will do that coming up next. Today's episode is sponsored by Athletic Greens. I started using Athletic Greens because I wanted better gut health, more energy, optimized immune system, and hated taking pills and vitamins. And I wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. With one scoop, delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, and focus. It costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. It's lifestyle-friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. Athletic Greens contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything while still tasting good. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's a scoop a day and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. Make it easy. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Russ, I want to talk to you about Tyson Forrester. Man, I I am so pleased with his play. And I, I feel like, you know, we've been talking all season about how he really needs to mm -hmm. stay with the Phantoms. And he is thriving. I, I really think so. And, you know, he had an a, assist on the power play goal on Wednesday, two goals Friday versus Wilkes-Barre's Cranton. Both of them were quite lovely. Um, the second goal, he followed up off a shot off the post. So, like, again, following up on his own play right. uh, was That's really smart. Deal. Yeah, it's really smart. And I feel like he is just getting better and better out there in terms of anticipating play. Um, he is really good at getting back when he needs to. And I, I just am really hopeful that he'll be in a really good position by the end of this season. Yeah, these were <clears throat> the upticks I was kind of hoping for that I talked about, whether it was last show or the show before that, where I was like, okay with his play, but I needed to see – a bit more that goal scorers touches come out following up his sh own shot is something he used to do regularly. So those things that he's has the confidence now to do that, we should really start to see uh, a nice upswing with him where he could be the team's leading scorer and really be the leader offensively. You know, he's starting to get into that role and that's great. Yeah. I, I just think that um, he is obviously one of the guys that you want to hold on to and you know, in whatever deals that you're making at the end of this season or a trade deadline. I mean, to us, it's obvious. Let's hope right. to the Flyers it is. <laughs> yeah, I just, I honestly would hate to see him be like a piece in a bigger deal of some sort. Right. Because like, what are the Flyers doing trying to like trade for somebody, you know, where you'd have to give up somebody like Tyson Forrester. I just I think I a lot of people it. are shaking their heads with you, believe me. <laughs> And of course, I have to be the broken record and talk about Ollie Lixol because again, one of us would. Yes, you know, he he just really is uh, keeping on playing as as hard as he can, and I, I just oh, I wish he would get the call up. I really do. Now I don't want him to sit there like Kiefer Bellows is. Right. You know, don't get me wrong. Um, that is really frustrating. But, it is. you know, he, he had a goal and an assist on Wednesday against Cleveland. Um, he made an absolutely spectacular pass to Bobby Brink for that goal on Friday. 
And I, I'm just constantly impressed by it, just his smarts out there. Yeah, I'm not sure what his contract status is. I hope they bring him back next year regardless because he's one of those guys that could make gains over the summer and be, you know, an answer at the NHL level for a role. And, you know, they don't see it right now, but I'm with you. I kind of see it. So, I, you know, I want this to, to happen for him because I think he's worked hard at it. And he made a big jump from last year to this year. Big jump this year. Yeah, I, I think so, too. But uh, you never know with management. and We have what, to be hesitant. Like, we got yeah. three weeks to, to worry about who might get dealt. And that's not a great place to talk about. So imagine the players. You know, they don't love it either. Yeah. Uh, as far as the goaltending goes, uh, obviously, you know, we know what decision they made. But Felix Sandstrom, I think, had two solid games in Cleveland uh, before he played in that game against Winnipeg. Sam Erson, God bless him, goes back down to the Phantoms, 28 saves on 30 shots in that win against Wilkes-Barre Scranton. So, you know, he doesn't miss a beat. No. No, I, I, and again, the goaltending's been solid. No matter who it is, and I have faith in Nagel too. It's a shame he doesn't get to play as much now, but uh, – they're fine in net. Net's not going to be their problem this year. I know. It's so good to say that, honestly. It is. Um, this week, we have a huge mountain to climb. So I talked about the standings and how Hershey was at the top of the division over 10 points ahead of the Phantoms. And uh, they've got two games against Hershey this week weekend uh, Wednesday and Saturday Friday they face Wilkes-Barre Scranton um, all of the games are at home though so that should be a fun weekend in Allentown if you have a chance to to head up there yeah that's a that's a uh, a good rivalry and um, I thought it was going to be in Hershey and I was going to say oh maybe Bruce Boudreau will take in a game now that unfortunately <laughs> he's without a job but certainly loves his hockey but I guess we'll have to wait till they're back in, in his closer rink. But he does own a team. He owns like an AJHL team, I think. Or no, yeah. US, USPHL. I think it's USPHL. He owns a team up there. So he'll stay busy. I still don't yeah. like what Vancouver did. I don't care if we're doing a Vancouver show or not. I'm going to speak <laughs> badly about the Canucks for a while. Well, you know, you're well within your rights to do that. Um you did mention the outdoor practice and mm -hmm. the Phantoms had a practice at Spring Mountain. Uh, they have an outdoor rink there that's kind of nestled in the woods, which is really cool. Um, I saw some video from that the is practice. cool. I saw it too. Like I had no fun. idea this place existed. Yeah, it's a it's mostly a ski resort, but they also have the rink and you know sledding and all yeah. that fun outdoor winter stuff going on. Once upon a time I used to ski every year. No, not anymore. <laughs> I'm a snowboarder, so uh, don't don't like the skiers bumping out the slopes. <laughs> but, oh, you get territorial, do you? I do. I absolutely do. All right. That will do it for today's show. We'll be back tomorrow. We're going to recap tonight's game against the Kings. We'll have your mailbag questions, so send them in. You can tweet us at Locked On Flyers. Email us at Locked On Flyers at gmail or comment over on youtube i am rachel i'm on twitter at r miriam that's r m i r i a m i'm russ i'm at sportsology s-p-o-r-t-s-o-l-o-g-y have a great day everyone